I'm very happy to start things off. So our first speaker today is uh, Luya Wang, and she's going to talk about interactions to oh, smooth it and symplectic <laughs> topology. <laughs> So a great start. Okay. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a symplectic topologist, um, and I, I would like to tell you some questions I like to think about and some things of others in mind. Uh, so let's start the talk of um, with Jeff and Mitchell's symplectic manifold. You all already know. So a symplectic manifold is an even dimensional manifold together with a closed and non-dimensional form. So now the general C here means the top wedge product is a volume form. And we can put uh, various relations on the um, space of some like the structures. Some uh, uh, usual ones are definition equivalent. If we uh, we say two some like manifolds are definition equivalent, if there's a diffeomorphism that pulls back one some like form to the other via a path of some like forms. And if this path is honestly an uh, equal sign, this is called some like Okay. So some questions, uh, very basic questions. For symplectic, uh, uh, symplectic structures are the following. Given an even dimensional manifold, you can ask, is there a symplectic structure? If there are, how many there are? And is a space of symplectic forms connected? So this is even an easier question that we can't really understand. Uh, well, I'll show you some answer to these. Uh, but in general, these are questions that are not so well understood. Uh, and then what is the space of symplectomorphism? So the, and then tie knot of this space of, space of symplectomorphism. <laughs> Uh, is called the Sumpatia mapping class group, which is also a very interesting um, group to study. And then uh, for the uh, odd dimension analog, so we have a uh, notion of contact manifolds, which uh, which uh, is equipped with a non-degenerate one form. So if I uh, non-degenerate here means if this one form is alpha, alpha watch d alpha to the top power is non-zero. Um, so given a contact manifold, we can ask, when is this the convex boundary of a symplectic manifold? Uh, convex means that there is a associated vector field so that uh, um, so the, the vector field points outwards uh, in the correct direction uh, with the correct orientation. And we can ask how many fillings there are. So uh, if a symplectic manifold has boundary uh, of a convex, uh, has its convex boundary, uh, a contact manifold, we call this some like a manifold, the filling, the some like a filling of this contact manifold. So we can ask how many fillings there are. We can ask up to diffeomorphism, how many there are and up to deformation equivalents. So uh, yeah, there, there are also many questions in this, uh, in this line. And similarly to the uh, symplectic case, we can ask what's the space of compactly supported symplectic morphisms. Um, okay, so some answers to uh, the previous slide. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, this is just some sampling of the more classical results. Uh, there are, of course, many more recent developments. So Gromov started, um, uh, I guess, a lot of the studies in some geometry with his 85 paper. In particular, in that paper, he showed that the compactly supported some like mapping class group uh, is contractible. And then McDuff, so regarding the space of uh, some body form in a given cohomology class, uh, uh, Tuzo McDuff showed that these spaces, uh, there are examples such that the space of some body forms in a given cohomology class is not connected. And then uh, to answer the, uh, in the in this line of questions, when a contact manifold is bounded by uh, bounds of some bound body manifolds and how many there are, so Elio Ashberg showed that uh, for the type S3, uh, so this is some S3 with the, the standard contact structure, although um, without telling you more, you probably don't have a... So this is the standard um, boundary of a symplectic B4. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so the tight S3 has a unique static filling up to diffeomorphism. And then similar uh, to this line of thoughts, uh, McDuff and Liska classified all symplectic fillings of universally tight lens spaces up to diffeomorphism. Uh, and then, of course, there are many more. Um, so I'm interested in the relation to smooth topology. Uh, and then there is this question attributed to Donaldson, uh, who asked, given two close, simply connected homeomorphic symplectic manifolds, omega 1x to omega 2, are they diffeomorphic mm -hmm. if and only if the six manifolds get uh, obtained by stabilization, meaning that you take products with S2 with the standard <laughs> form of it, whether those are deformation equivalent? Uh, in the notion that we discussed on the first page. Uh, let's call this stabilization. 
So this is um, you might have know uh, you might know that in the smooth ca category, people like to study stabilization via kind of some sort of S two process too. But of course, that um, sympathetic structure will be killed by that stabilization. So in the sympathetic category, we think about um, stabilization by taking products. Uh, so why does this question even make sense? Um, so this uses a, a couple of uh, classical algebraic topo uh, sorry, topology effects. Um, so a priori, if I have two closed four manifolds that are homeomorphic but not necessarily diffeomorphic, um, I and that are simple and they're simply connected, then I know they're each coordinate. And then once I know they're each coordinate, I can uh, once I take the product with S two, I'm I following the dimension that I can apply smells. Theorem to show that they are diffeomorphic. So even though the four manifolds are priori are not diffeomorphic, once I take uh, the stabilization, at least these uh, six manifolds are diffeomorphic. And then I can ask whether the two uh, sympathetic forms are deformation equivalent. Okay, so if you think this theorem, uh, this question is kind of odd, uh, we prove kind of examples for the uh, forward direction, meaning that uh, there are infinitely many examples of sympathetic. Four manifolds that are pairwise diffeomorphic, but the stabilizations are not deformation equivalent. And then in the other direction from six to four, so that that's the direction I ask uh, if you have two six manifolds uh, that are the stabilization of two four manifolds and the six manifolds are deformation equivalent, whether the four manifolds are diffeomorphic. So we show if the six manifolds are deformation equivalent, then their Bromo Witten invariants of the four manifolds agree, uh, all Bromo Witten invariants agree. So for all G and N. And as a corollary of that, um, by applying works of Taos and uh, Yano Parker and same with uh, Amanda Hirschi, and also, so this is by joining with, with Amanda, um, a corollary is that uh, for the sympathetic, for two close and connected sympathetic four manifold whose stabilizations are this are deformation equivalent, their four manifold, like their separate words in there, it's all agree. Okay, so this is not as good as saying they're diffeomorphic, but several Wittens are kind of the only invariants we have uh, to distinguish the structures currently. Okay, so what's the best? Uh, so I am interested in questions. Uh, well, I'm interested in this question. Does there a, does a homotopy S2 plus S2 emit an exotic smooth structure? Uh, I'm not going to turn it smooth for correct conduct. Everyone knows that. So then this is also pretty um, mainstream, but uh, to be honest, this is beyond my expertise, but we can ask if a having a symplectic structure on it restricts its smooth type. Um, so the question is, is a symplectic homotopy S2 process to a smoothly standard? So my hope is that we can study this by looking at the formation equivalence classes of the six stabilized six manifolds, which will tell us something about the four manifold smooth topology. And um, this is optimistic, but there are many examples when a symplectic form leads to a suppre uh, suppressing topological constraints on the form on the line. Uh, smooth manifolds. So this is uh, one of my favorite theorems, um, which says if a uh, if you have a four manifold that's S one cross a closed three manifold, and that four manifold emits a symplectic like structure, then the three manifold is actually fibered over S one. So having the symplectic structure is very uh, powerful to even tell you what uh, to tell you something about n. Okay, so some other examples um, that when the symplectic uh, Form can constrain topology. Uh, this is a slightly different line of thoughts, but um, this there's this theorem of Chris Wendell who says if you have a uh, strong filling, uh, if you have a symplectic filling, uh, a minimal symplectic filling of a planar contact three manifold. So planar means your contact three manifold is supported by a planar open book. So open book is some um, decomposition of your manifold uh, via uh, certain foliations. Um, so, so he showed that if your uh, if your bounding four manifold or yeah four manifold is a symplectic filling, then it has to come from a left perturbation. So that's uh, um, a constraint on the on the deformation equivalent type, but also in particular the smooth type. And then, so we are working on the generalization of this. So we show if uh, W omega is a minimal symplectic filling of a planar spinal open book. So spinal is some um, Generalization of spinal open book is a generalization of the usual open book uh, in the hope to decompose your, uh, in the hope to study manifolds that are not obviously planar in the usual open book. 
So we show that if uh, W uh, is the semi-filling of such a contact manifold, then it's deformation equivalent to the complement of uh, a multi-section in the left deformation. What does minimal mean in minimal? Minimal means that there's no subtracting that is here of self intersection negative one. Uh, so in general, I'm gonna finish early. In general, the tools I use uh, are pseudo-home curves, both closed and punctured, and log manual DA theory, in particular in that contact homology, uh, and some basic trait differential topology. So yeah, that's all. Oh, thank you. Other questions? So this is this Donaldson question uh, is obviously false, but I mean the answer is not good. But uh, in the direction where you get counter examples, are they have special features that there is a version of it which might still be true? Yeah. So you can add the C one condition. We actually uh, the invariant we used to tell the six manifolds apart are actually there, like the C one. Their classical invariant, uh, classes, but it's not even known in four dimension whether C one is a complete <laughs> like deformation equivalent. So I think that's why maybe uh, so Ran also conjectured this uh, in his uh, Gorman Witten paper. Um, and then the C one condition is not there probably because at the time maybe we don't know if there are examples of two manifolds with the same C one, but they're not still not deformation equivalent. Yeah, I say four manifold. Yeah, four, in four manifold case. Yeah, but you can add that. Yeah. Okay, so um, what what do you what's low dimensional gauge theory? Cyber Witten theory? Yes, Cyber Witten theory. Okay. Which is yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I wondered if that was something I didn't no, know. No, no. Just Cyber Witten. Mm -hmm.